I know. We always we're always talking. We to always other. wait like, until it says. You mean like right now? Go. See you yeah, right now. Like and, now. You can start. <laughs> and welcome to uh, another episode of Ripping the Rack Podcast, episode number sixty-two, where obviously shit just doesn't matter because we're not going to follow anything anyway. Welcome to whose line is it anyways? <laughs> whose line is it anyway? The words don't uh, count and the points don't matter. Absolutely, I am uh, uh, one of the tri quad hosts, whatever we are now. Uh, my name is Tim. With me today, uh, disregard the special guest at the moment. We'll get to this special guest in a moment. Yes. Uh, I'm going to start on the top left for me. He is the king of the north. Oh, that guy. Mr. Calvin, how are you, buddy? I'm good, buddy. How Where's are you? Where's your crown, dude? You haven't even I gone to Burger King. I, I all went, you got to do is go to Burger King. <sighs> That's all you got to I went to Dollar Store today. And I looked at, like, you know, the uh, bridesmaid stuff. Like, I looked at Halloween stuff. There was no crowns. There was nothing there. That, okay. Yeah, you don't need a crown. Tierra. You now need a Tierra. tiara. Calvin needs right. a Tierra. Go. I'm going I'm to FedEx him a, a very special crown. I'm going to get me your address <laughs> off, off call. But nice. I'm going to FedEx you a very <laughs> nice. special, special crown. King of the North. Yeah, he, uh, he is on top today. He is on my Giant top dog. right. He is used to being on the bottom, but he is on the top. Mackie Pins, how you doing, buddy? Oh, it's good to not be on the bottom. I can breathe tonight. It's so good I'll be able to ask my questions. How are we All doing, right. everybody? Good to be here tonight. Good, good. Uh, on my bottom right, uh, he is on the bottom. He is also a Coastal Crusader. We also know him as Brian. How you doing, buddy? So hey, many buddy, what's going on? Yeah, so many nicknames. So many. So many. And... We have a very special guest tonight. She's a special person altogether. She is <laughs> Her Majesty of the North. She's <laughs> above the King <laughs> of the North. Her name is Jill Wood. Jill, everybody, hey. get up and <laughs> kneel and bow to the Queen. Thank you. <laughs> How's it going, guys? I'm very <laughs> glad to finally be doing your podcast. Well, I mean, yeah, I'm glad to have you. I've only, only been asking you for a year. <laughs> Tim had said you were very expensive to get on the show. He's been collecting donations from us every single week. I hope the money goes to a good place. It's cost us quite a bit over the last month or two yeah, since yeah, we started yeah. talking about it. And then this. we had to factor in the exchange rate. Right. And, uh, I'm telling you. Happened. So it became free. <laughs> it became free. It became free when we factored in the exchange rate. Right. Well, though we had to smuggle everything over the border because we're dirty, dirty Americans. We're not allowed yet. Hey, well, hey, hey, don't don't hey, say smuggle hey, over the border three yet. Of us They're dirty, dirty Americans. <laughs> Be careful. We're on the interwebs. You just can't say stuff like that. <laughs> that is <laughs> true. They're, they're tracking you now with your COVID tracker. <laughs> Jill, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Good. Happy to how see are you. you guys? Happy to see you guys too. Very can't wait till it's a long. person. I know. I know. Soon, hopefully. It is. It is hopefully soon. Uh, what did they say? August sometime? Beginning of August? August 8th. No, August that's, 8th. For, that's for us going to 75%, hopefully. Uh, have double vaccinated. I don't know when they're getting the borders. I thought they said August 9th. They did. They on the night on the news tonight, and at least in Rockland, they said on the, the news, the state news, that it was going to be like August 8th or 9th. Good. As long as you're both vaccinated and you have yeah. to have a test before you go. And then they would like you to send a test to, to them when you get back. And then a birth certificate of your firstborn and probably <laughs> your, Lock your a hair. couple blood samples blood. and yeah. optional <laughs> stool sample for potency. Yeah. 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 I got my shots. make us jump through hoops to bowl. Jesus, yeah, exactly. I got my shots. I got my damn shots. I want to go bowling up there. God damn it. Well, I, I hear Calvin has been uh, offering me up and that we're, we're all going <laughs> to bowl together. So uh, this is this is me saying, sure, when, whenever you guys are on your way up, let's do it. Yes. Uh, apparently, we have uh, Jill and Tasha. <laughs> and then the four of us are bowling in some tournament. I don't know what, but that's Ta what I've been told. Tasha, I'm, okay. throwing, I'm throwing it out there. You have no choice now. I've committed you to. <laughs> we're in. Nice. We are in. Mm -hmm. So, uh, before we dive into some questions and comments for Jill, uh, there are a couple of tournaments I wanted to bring up real quick. Um, 
the first one is in danger of being postponed slash canceled once again. Uh, that is the All Nighter at Starts and Strikes, which is scheduled oh, no. for this Friday, July twenty third. <clears throat> Kitch team in. They need at least ten teams to make this go. Um, I think they're at mm-hmm. either eight or nine or something like that. Yeah. So uh, two men, one woman, scratch bowling. It yes. Is. At eight o'clock at night, and you bowl until about six in the morning. No, Dude, it's, one, it's it sounds crazy. Well, we've gotten done as as early as like five five thirty, but there had been some yeah. years where we did get done around six or so. It is a thirteen team round robin, uh, but it is one of the most fun shenanigan filled nights of bowling anywhere. It is such a good time. Lots um, of to me, what, oh my god! One of the coolest things is literally bowling in tournaments in the middle of the night. Uh, it, it's weird. There's only a couple. We get the bowl at Lakeside on Thanksgiving. Like you get that midnight shift. Everybody's like giddy, exhausted. They've been bowling for so long, <laughs> and it's like we don't start that shift until around one in the morning anyway. So we get done close to like three, three thirty. You forget what day it is. You forget <laughs> what time it is. Like you come out and the sun's just starting to creep up. Like it's a mess. But this all night is so much fun, especially going to Denny's afterwards and messing with the waitresses at four thirty, five o'clock in the morning. <sighs> Nice. You talk oh, about a good Denny's. time. You nice. talk about a good time. Oh, go for Denny's. Oh, man. So, uh-huh. call Russ and Jody at area code 207-743-9863. I believe uh, they need to know pretty much by Wednesday if they're going to have this tournament. So, yeah. uh, put a team in. Get some people. They cancel a pretty a fairly busy Friday night to do that. So Yes. Yes. Uh, let's see. We have uh, the international slash national mixed doubles uh, coming up August 28th and 29th at 1710 Bowling Center in lovely Augusta, Maine, uh, right on Route 3. The uh, capital. The capital of Maine. Mm. Sign up. Get your team in. This is a uh, scratch bowling. Uh, Jill, have you ever won this tournament? No. That's right. You haven't. Ask me if I have, Jill. Have you won this tournament? I'm not going to answer that because people say I talk too much. Uh, I I know know you have won this tournament, (laughs) Tim. (laughs) That was so bad. (laughs) Marky, clip that for the roast. Oh, my God. I can't. I'm not recording this call. Tim is. Tim, Tim, send him the file so he can clip it. Don't tell me what to do. I'm just going to start uh, recording every call from now on. Well, you know, these are on YouTube, of which you have the login for. No, I don't. You I have most the Instagram. certainly do. And have you the... have... Oh, okay. You well, have it's the... been seven minutes, and Tim has already given me a headache. So, new so a long show. New one high seven score. Ten. Yeah, new high Sports score. Sports Center, International Mixed Doubles, <laughs> August 28th and 29th. They are still looking for teams... Feel free to sign up. This is a weekend long thing, a Saturday, Sunday event. Um, good times. A lot of fun. Lots of fun. Uh, and the last one before we kind of move forward. Actually, no, a couple more. Uh, I just remembered. We have the Outrun the Bear. Uh, the next one, I believe, is a Scratch Singles Outrun the Bear. It is. Um, Saturday, September 25th at Ryan's Family Entertainment in Millis, Massachusetts. Uh, that is a $60 entry fee if paid by September 15th, $65 if paid after the 15th of September. Uh, buybacks are $10 for the string number one and increase every additional string. Unlimited buybacks for strings one, two, and three. Uh, if a bowler has not used their buyback, they can use one buyback at the re- for the remainder of the tournament. Uh, they are guaranteeing a $1,200 top prize and they will pay the top eight spots um if if they can get even remotely close to what they had for uh the last handicap one which was a couple weeks ago um, they paid two grand <laughs> the winner mm-hmm. awesome yeah i mean that's like 10 grand canadian i mean that's that is. pretty close that's yep. a lot calvin Line and i would just yeah yeah Line Line stack. <laughs> 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 Uh, the last one, uh, Pro Series. Uh, the 2021-2022 Pro Series schedule is out. Uh, oh, really? First... Now? Yes. Oh, I'm, Breaking I news, Mark. 
I missed that, that post. Yeah, that was in Canopus chat too. last week, I think. Uh, the first stop. The Ever first since stop. I turned 40, I don't do much of the Facebook. Oh, the Facebook. I got, I got away from the Facebook, to, you know, kind of a little bit. Okay, well, Marky, listen up. I'm listening to you, baby. First stop, Portsmouth, <laughs> oh, September 11th, doubles knockout. Shifts are noon and 2. They may need a 10 a.m. if they get enough signups like they did two years ago. Um Andrew has they've done a great job at Portsmouth. They've made some changes. Pins seem to be flying pretty good. Hopefully you can slide. That was the big complaint I had. Hopefully they've fixed that sliding issue. Uh the rest of the schedule is spare time. October set with spare time, Marky. Uh spare time recreation is way out west in Massachusetts. I'm not quite sure what city. It's one of the few actually I've never stepped foot in. Okay. So I'm really uh, not familiar with the place. October 17th, that is a singles knockout. Uh, three to a lane, uh, starting shift times 11 and 2. Uh, the 10 stringer, November 28th at CPL. Uh, what? Huh? So they're going to do a 10 stringer at Central Park? That's what it says. Oh. That's a small house, <laughs> isn't it? Oh. No, that's a tough house. <laughs> oh. Uh-huh. <laughs> 12 that's a race to 1200 you hit 1200 you win the tournament by about 40 <laughs> uh, <laughs> we got uh, we got KY, boys <laughs> <laughs> we got uh january 8th uh at exeter will be the random draw teams uh lita lanes february 5th doubles elimination Millis March 5th singles eliminations and then Timber Lanes will have the playoffs on April 2nd. Good to see things getting back to Timber Lanes. They kind of dropped out of the realm of a lot of the pro stuff over the last five to ten years. Good to and see I them s- back into it. And I see once again, Maine gets no love with any pro series tournament once again for the uh-huh. 932nd year in a row, except for the one time they went to Augusta, sold it out, and never went back because it was too far to drive. That's not Sorry. true bullshit. We went to Sanford twice. Okay, Sanford is is Northern Mass. It's Maine to Mass. It's Northern Mass. Mass we went to Maine. We went to Maine. My God. We went to Maine. I'm sorry it wasn't Maine enough for the Mainer, but we went to Maine. Yes, we did. In the middle of a driving snowstorm one year, I might friggin' add. It's too so, far to drive. I've oh, never said that. There's, I'm just, there's no, look, there's I'm no just pro surrendered. series in Canada. It's too far to drive. I, I, I drive. Hey, Calvin, we drive. I, I know. I, I You're right. Tim, laundry's done. Well, laundry's, laundry's done, done Tim. Hey, yeah. let me text my let me text Bro, my you're, ta- you're talking to the guy that drove overnight and slept in the parking lot at Hobbs to bowl the Dobby the next morning. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I have no. You talking the guy that drove to Fredericton after I got done bowling, so I could go bowling. Yes, again. that's true. You did. There's a bunch. There's a bunch of us freaky animals that would do shit like that. Absolutely. I used to. Bo- I used I've to drive it. an hour and a half yes. a week to bowl league. I've done it. Yeah, I. Uh, I worked One way. A double. <laughs> I worked a double shift. Get out of work at seven o'clock in the morning. Drove to Saco, bowled a vacation land in the Mass Pro Tour. Uh, the one o'clock shift uh, finished up around five o'clock or so, and then drove to Fredericton for the Worlds. Nice. After being up for thirty something hours, that was back before five hour energy in Red Bull. Yeah, cocaine's wow. a hell of a drug. Cocaine's <laughs> yeah. a hell of a drug. Lots of crazy. coffee. I stick my feet in Charlie Murphy's couch. Come on, I got more sense. Yeah. Than that. Yeah. Yeah. Stick my feet in Charlie Murphy's couch. Come on now, cocaine's a hell of a drug. And. The very last thing I will bring up, there will be more information on this. I do need to talk to Calvin offline about this. Uh, I had a conversation with Sean Baker. Uh, Baker is going to actually come on the podcast here sometime in the next couple of weeks to talk to to talk. Well, it is exciting because uh, Baker's got an interesting concept that he wants to put together. It is a tournament. Uh, He doesn't want it to go until 2024. Um, that will allow for a year of planning and then qualification for both Americans and Canadians, a Ryder Cup style tournament. Yes. Absolutely. Like yes. Absolutely. It will be in his mind. Here's what he said. He goes, I would like That's to a do great idea. He goes, I can't speak for Canada, but from for the States, what I'd like to do is 
two qualifying tournaments in Maine, two in New Hampshire, two in Massachusetts. You take your top 10. Your top two are your captain and your co-captain or associate captain. They then choose two other people. So you have 12 total people. So 10 automatically make it, and then it's a wild card. Two captain's pick. Two, two captain's picks. Okay. And those captain picks have to have at least done about half of the other qualified qualifying tournaments. They don't want just, he doesn't think captain's picks would just say, well, you haven't bowled in anything in two years, but you, we're taking you. So someone, which is cool to me. I don't know. I uh, love this idea. This, That's a fantastic idea. We talked, yeah, we talked, yes, yep. We talked yesterday for, I don't know, 20, 25 minutes about it. Um, but he wants to come on the show sometime soon so we can get it going. And then he wants to, you know, he's like, look, I, he, he, as he said, he goes, I don't want to be the only one running this. I want it to be done right. I want it to last. He goes, I want people to bowl, you know, for the pride of representing your country. This one, It's not like this is going to be the world's where it's splitting 10 grand for winning. You know, there needs to be some money, obviously, but this is more about the trophy. trophy at the end. Yeah. 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 Which and I us, thought was and, and us saying Canada is better than America. It's, it's absolutely. I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready to say it. I'm ready to do it. I'm with you, Cal. <laughs> All right, we're... All right. So respect that. It's we've cute. we've muted Jill. Oh shit! I can't unmute her. How the hell do you mute the damn special guest? You are a dick. And, and then Calvin muted Tim. I respect uh, Jill. Calvin you have to muting. unmute yourself, Jill. Jill, you yeah. have to unmute yourself. Sorry, I forgot. You couldn't. I couldn't do it for you. She's figuring it out. Oh, she get, there she I'm goes. Hey. She got it. Yeah. You got it. Tammy. <sighs> Tim's in a 10-minute timeout for muting the special guest. I, uh, ten, okay. 10 minutes. In all fairness, I think I think Calvin and I have to say that, right? I mean, you well, guys are all representing. I think the two of us have to come out here with some bravado and be like, you know, us Canadians oh, will take uh, you all down. <laughs> billion percent you know all of the wrestling aspects that we've kind of been a part True. of lately bring right. it cut yeah. the promo be proud of who you are because somebody's <laughs> going to bring it right back to you sweetheart it's and true. it's going to go and we're going to meet in the middle of the competition and we're going to see who's going to be on top we're at gonna, the end of it and it i promise you it won't be you it Bar. will be us standing Bar. tall at the end Bar, Calvin. you're talking, you're talking like it. you're actually part of a top 12 in america Ooh. what have you done lately <laughs> uh, three world titles, bud. Where have you been? I said lately. Uh, you haven't been relevant since 2002. Excuse me. <laughs> really? A world record in 2011, a world title in 2013, four pro series titles in 2013 uh, to 2015, okay. running a bowling that's, alley for the last eight years. That's a good. How's your bowling seven, alley doing, big that's guy? Sixty-seven years ago, bud. No, uh, no, no. See, I'm supporting the game way more than anybody <laughs> like you sitting around putting live streams on Facebook ever could. I'm sorry, yeah. big guy. My contributions may not be knocking pins into the pit too much anymore, but I'm keeping the place <laughs> open, <laughs> unlike you. Well, unlike you. I, I to like to bowl. Get to the top, to get to the top <laughs> yeah, 12, get bowling is fun. The back it's there, good. You get just, <laughs> ball goes real fast, hits pins. I, I don't know what to do with my hands. I don't know about you up there, big guy. I don't know about you up there. So just out of curiosity, who the hell muted me again? Because I had unmuted myself. <laughs> like 10 minutes ago. I muted you, you as soon as you unmuted. It was a 10-minute timeout, and then we can't behave. We behave. can't behave when Gramps can't talk. We can't behave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. Mute wars. We're children. Oh, did he mute him again? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he muted him again. He's such a weeder. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, Jill, welcome to the podcast. Thanks yes, hi, for Jill. having How me. How are you, honey? So, hi. Good morning, so good glad. afternoon, and good night. Good. <laughs> See you all. <laughs> good night and good luck. Yeah. So, we have questions for you. Woohoo! I have answers. Okay. I think, I hope. Hope but answers. I really think what really people want to know is who is no, your don't. favorite no, male main no. bowler no. who has a name that rhymes with Mute him. Mute, him. Mute him. I think the answer to that question is obviously Tim Matero. Oh, well, she think, fed into it. I don't oh, think God. we. I don't think we heard what that question was, so it's not a valid question. 
We didn't hear that. So. That's, that question is garbage. So uh, <laughs> let's start, Brian. Brian, why don't you? Why don't you start? What questions do you okay. have for Jill? Or question? And it's got to be one that we've I, already given her, so she can I, prepare. I have. Oh. I have. Oh, I have a does. question, Jill. <laughs> I, All right. I'll, I'll take the first question. Oh, here okay, we go. Alan, go right My ahead. first question was, uh, in 2019, what was your favorite moment in June? <laughs> My favorite moment in June, Calvin. Oh, oh did someone God. mute her again? Who yeah, would do that? You can't mute the guest. Oh, I can't mute to get. I'm sorry, Jill. Answering a question, Jill, you have to take yourself off mute. <laughs> go, go ahead, Jill. Go ahead and answer that one. Go oh, ahead. Yeah. I'm, I'm ready. My favorite moment that June was winning the Mixed International with you, Calvin, and beating <laughs> the Tim Matera. <laughs> Such a great moment in life. <laughs> and and for the record, Jill did beat me that string. I did bowl against her that string. She did. And she That's did. True. She did beat me. Yeah. And I'm okay with it because she's Jill fucking Wood. <laughs> Jill's beat me a whole bunch of times in the 560. Mostly in yep. the playoffs. Brian, <laughs> everybody beat you, though. <laughs> Boom! Yeah, roast right I there. Know. You can't roast something that's obvious, Tim. That's like re-microwaving a hamburger. It's just bland. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it never works out good when you kind of nuke a burger after. That doesn't work out too good. <laughs> So I'll I'll start with a real question, Jill. Sure. Okay. Who who um who is or were your mentors in this game? Um well <laughs> uh love him or hate him, Doug Cormier <laughs> has played a huge role in my bowling career, I guess. Um, you know, Doug, a lot of people have the thoughts about him, but for me, he's always been kind of like a second dad. Um, he let us, you know, bowl. He owned a bunch of bowling alleys. So, um, you know, when I was a teenager, I spent a lot of time bowling for free at his centers. Um, he was a coach of mine for a long time. Uh, and even when we won like our first provincial tournament, he came out to celebrate. Like to him, it was us winning was a, a win for him. Uh, so it was, you know, kind of cool to, to have him there to celebrate with us. But uh, he was, you know, probably the biggest one for me. Um, but I really liked Mark's answer when he started talking about that a couple of weeks ago on your podcast, because he was talking about how Melissa played such a big role in his bowling career. Uh, and I have to say, you know, for me, it, it, Tommy's also done that. I mean, I was on the bowling scene before Tommy, so he didn't really bring me into it. You know, we spent a lot of time over the years and we still do talking about shots and strategy and lineups and um, tournaments and, you know, what I want to bowl and who I want to bowl with and that kind of stuff. And, and, you know, I'd be really remiss if I didn't mention him, um, maybe not as a mentor, but as, you know, somebody who's helped me get to where I am because it really has been a partnership. And that actually kind of feeds into where my question was going to be. You just kind of like stole it <laughs> in a way. Yeah. But what I was going to say, you and I are in similar situations where we're both, you know, yeah. married to another like professional bowler. Granted, yeah. Melissa stopped bowling. She hurt herself and she's doing more of the family thing now. But it's, it's when you get to this certain level, it's nice having somebody else in the home that you can have that banter with, you know, because granted, we're in the bowling alley and, and we're bowling, we're doing our things. But being able to go home and speak to somebody on the same level instead of just how was your day? Oh, and then you try to explain to like your wife or your husband that doesn't bowl about the right. strategies of what it was like coming down. And I finished with two coming out and, and then just like the hell are you even talking about <laughs> being able to like banter with somebody that gets the lingo. I was going to, that was going to be my question to you. Thanks. Like it, how cool is it to be able to have somebody that you don't have to worry about changing how you would say it, that you and Tommy can just sit down and discuss it on the same level. Exactly. It's amazing. Like, it really is fantastic. Um, you can sit there and we can, we, you know, I mean, he knows all the bowlers. He's seen the stats. Like, Tommy's a stats guy. He has stats going back forever. And so, you know, we talk about bowlers or we talk about our opinions or we talk about matches or shots. Um, he really gets it. And what's really great about it is he understands my drive to be good. So when I'm bowling, you know, there's no question. He takes care of our kids. 
I don't have to worry about that, you know, Mm -hmm. and it's the same for him. You know, if he's bowling, I've got the kids because we understand it's the other person's passion. Like you're not going to force them to, you know, give up something for it to also have a family, right? Like that's just not I mean, it's important to have the support on both sides. Exactly. It happened that way in our home. It was the same way with Melissa and I. But now that she doesn't bowl, she has never once looked at me and said, well, you know, I'm not doing it anymore. So I need you to back off of it. She's like, no, there's a tournament. You go. And I'm like, well, I don't really. She goes, no, get your ass out there and go and do it. I will take care of this and just come back. And I want to hear about it later. And then we sit and we have a coffee together and we just sit and we talk about these things. And I always felt like having that extra person in the house, it, it's not necessarily like a way to vent, but it's a way that you can actually talk on the same level as you understand it to another person that understands it the same way. Exactly. And you can grow and benefit off of each other much more than other people who Absolutely. couldn't do that. Absolutely. And Tommy and I don't always agree. Like, you know, I mean, it's not like I'm sitting there having a conversation and he's just feeding my ego or telling me what I want to hear. Like, if he has a difference of opinion, he's going to tell me. There's been times where he's pulled me aside and been like, no, or, you know, think about it a different way. Or um, specifically in 2012, we're bowling in the women's provincial and we're trying to go for our first win. And I'd had some individual success. And he was like, look, like, that's great. Like, but you're not done. Like, don't it good for you. Like, and you can celebrate that at another time or you can talk about it later, but you still have to win this tournament. So that means nothing until you're done. And at the time I was kind of, you know, you, you sit there and you're kind of taken aback by it. Right. Cause you're like, well, wait a minute. Shouldn't you be supportive? But that, but that was is, supportive. That, that is, is supportive, supportive. Because In that's what way, I needed really to hear. Is. Right. Yeah. Keeping Cause that's you focused what I needed on to the hear. Bigger prize. Right. Cause that's what I wanted. I wanted that title. It, the other stuff didn't matter, but Anyway, that's that's the part it plays. And I think that if you don't have that, it, it makes it really hard. Like, Tim, it, you, Brian, Calvin, too, like, I'm sure your wives, you know, they understand bullying. I'm sure if you didn't have the support that you had, you probably wouldn't be able to do what you do and be as successful as you were, right? So my wife doesn't understand bullying at all, but she understands my drive with my competitiveness. Yeah. And she has been extremely supportive of my bowling. Um even though she doesn't necessarily quite understand the sport. Um, she's not a sport type person, but when you have three boys and a husband. There's going to be some competition there it, somewhere. There's some competition. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, I were there times where I would have loved to have been able to have the conversation of, oh, my God, so I, I played this shot this way. You know, what, what, how would you have played it? You know, that would have been cool. Um, but I, I didn't, <laughs> oh, kitty. And then when I got, I got my dog here on my lap. He's trying to get my attention. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it would have been, it, I don't know. I don't know if it would have made things different for me if I had married, call it married into the game. Um, but I don't know. She she supports it. I, I I would never be able to do what I've done yeah. without her support and her taking care of the things at home, which allowed me to you know go away for weekends at a time or a week at a time and you know things like that. So yeah, um, yeah mm-hmm. I think I think spouses for bowlers like it's really an under maybe underappreciated or under it's not something people talk about, but I think that if you want to be successful, you really do have to have an understanding partner, whether it's understanding the game or not, like, but understanding your drive to be good. Um, right. And, and the risk and respecting that that's your decision. That's what you want and, and supporting it. Cause if not, I don't know, it must be an awful fight for people who don't have that. I think to, to try to, to do it at a, such a high level and then, you know, feeling like. Yeah. They- I think yeah, so. Big deal. Before I met Melissa, a long years ago, I was dating a different girl, and she would come watch me bowl because she just, I don't know, liked to see me compete. But she was not into it. She would sit there and read her book. And I remember years I hit 400 in the league for the first time in the season, and I was so happy. And I, I went up and I was like, "Dude, I hit 430. I had a great night." And she goes, "Oh, so you're done? That means we can go home." And it just, it was that I just couldn't do it. You know, I, I have so much passion. I love this game so much. 
I had to marry into it. I, I had no choice. I, I couldn't be with somebody that couldn't share that with me. I could share your passion with you. I'd have no problem. But if you can't dig any of what I'm doing, I don't know. I don't know. Kelly's a good hybrid. Kelly supports my passion for bowling and is happy when I do good things in bowling. And she used to bowl league. She bowled a league with Tim. She bowled a couple leagues. She bowled the Canadian with dad one year when he needed yeah. a partner. You know, she's she's a decent bowler. She floats around 92 to 100, depending yeah. on, you know, how she's bowling. Yeah. But now that we have Colin and everything going on, it's like, okay, she has stop bowling for now but she still supports me bowling and that's her watching colin while i bowl (laughs) right but that gives you peace of mind while you're doing it right it allows you to go and be the best you that you can be it's oh it's a thing you don't have to think about when you're on the approach right is where's what's my kid doing (laughs) Yep. now there's honestly jill you just said something that i haven't heard in two years which is be the best you that you can be. <laughs> I missed that. That's I, motivational. I, that's like I, that's I, like Jill's mantra there. That's go do you. Like you've never I, I guess you've never bowled with Jill. So that's I what know, Jill does. but I haven't I haven't heard it in two years. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh Brian, what what what, what questions you got for our our special guest? Well, what is your favorite accomplishment in bowling? You have a number of accomplishments, oh. but what's your favorite? My favorite. Oh, my goodness. Um, we, we talk about this a lot, actually, because, um, I mean, yeah, I, I guess there's been quite a few. But, um, you know, winning our first women's provincial um, for me with with team meeting was probably the highlight of my bowling career. It was something I had aspired to do since I was little. Um, and we had tried and come short so many times. So when it finally happened, we finally, when that last ball was thrown and we turned around, we all looked at each other and we were like, holy shit, this finally has happened. Um, I just, there's no greater feeling, right? Cause you've, it's something you've worked towards for so long that there's just nothing that can beat it. Um, but as much as Calvin joked about it, you know, winning the mixed worlds, but Tim and I were talking about it before the show too. It's just, it was one of those strings that if you're in a playoff, whether you're on the winning end or the losing end, it's what you want in a playoff. And so, you know, when I sit there and I think back on, on a lot of the things that I've done or a lot of the tournaments I've been in, a lot of the wins, it's those types of things that come back. It's those moments that you, you know, you're like, we put on a good show and it came down to the last box or, you know, it could have gone either way. Like those are the ones that you're like, wow, like that, that really stand out for me. Um, I also, it's been, it's been, I've, I've had the opposite too, right? Like I coached the youth bowling for a long time and my son is bold. So, you know, some of the stuff in bowling that I'm proudest of is watching, you know, him bowl and him win, or, you know, watching some of the girls that I've helped coach, you know, win tournaments or be successful. Um, you know, that's not taking credit for any of their success, but it's just to watch them succeed and to watch them do well, or just watch them bowl Mm -hmm. good. You know, you're like... You know, it just, it, it's a proud moment, too. So, <laughs> Fucking Tim's having Kat, difficult. Cat's just taking you out, Tim. <laughs> My God. He's, uh, Larry is being extra special tonight. <laughs> Calvin, what do you, what do you got for Joe? What, what's a question already, you got for? I already him? asked her. I already asked her my big question. <laughs> that was the only question you really had? I thought she had another one. No, I, uh, <laughs> do we really want to put that on the record? <laughs> Yes. He wanted to. Oh, yeah. So, no, I won't do that. No. Do it. All right. If you <laughs> if you had to choose. I swear between, to God, if this is a Gim Dodaro question, I'm getting no, off this no, ball, no, no, I swear no. to God. Well, it sort of is. It sort of is. If I you, know. If you, had, if you had to choose between Corey Smith and Calvin Locke, who would you want on your team? <laughs> I he, he warned me this is coming. <laughs> And uh, we joked about it, but in all seriousness, you know, I, I've bowled with Corey and I've bowled with Calvin and they are very different bowlers. Um, but for people who, who have a perception of Calvin Locke, um, I really do think it truly is perception. Like, unless you've bowled with him, um, unless you had the opportunity to travel in a car with him and be his, uh, you know, car buddy and to uh, sing songs in the back and watch 
movies with him and uh, bowl with him all day. I really don't think you can judge Calvin. Um, he's the best. He really is the best teammate. Um, he's so much fun. So yeah, I, it, it's, not, it's not a slight to Corey, but uh, yeah, Cal Calvin Locke every time. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah, so I've, I, I've got one for you. Sure. Um, who do you feel mm -hmm. is would be or is your toughest opponent currently? <laughs> um, I think that is a tough question. Um, and I think it's tough because, you know, and you guys are going to laugh at me, but I think it, when you sit there and you think about it in bowling, the person who's most likely to beat me is me. Uh, I have such a hard time. I, have, I do have a lot of anxieties around bowling. Uh, it comes from, like you talked about, Tim, you know, you sometimes felt like you're being compared to others or you're being um, slighted or, you know, maybe weren't getting some credit that you thought you deserved. And so a lot of times I go out there and uh, if I beat myself a lot of times. Um, so in the end, a, a lot of times I struggle against that. Um, but we're talking about people that I think um, are fantastic. You know, there's a lot of uh, great women coming up and who are bowling right now. Um, the ones I have the best matches with, like, um, that I, out there, there's, there's tons of them. I mean, like Maddie Kelly right now is, is huge. She's bowling fantastic. Her match with Mario Johnson the other night, um, Mario won in the shot in the 10th was amazing. Like the two of them bowled so well. Um, you know, anyone who has an opinion that women can't hang with the men is crazy. They just had to watch That's that. <laughs> you know? Yes, they can. I bowl right? half of them in the league. Yeah. Yes, they can. But, you know, you, you saw it. And Ke Calvin, what are you looking at there, buddy? Uh, I'm just looking over here. There's lots of stuff going <laughs> on over here. <laughs> I, I have to, the shout out I want to give, though, to somebody that I, I think maybe doesn't get enough credit is Trisha Hughes. Man, that girl and I have had some epic matches over the years. Um, she's She really is fantastic. And I just, I don't know if she necessarily gets enough credit for it. Um, yeah, just we've, we've bowled against each other in women's tournaments as well as the mixed. And, you know, we, we've battled it out. And, you know, she's she's won some, I've won some. But, yeah, she's she's pretty awesome, too. I bowled the can am with Trisha for many years. It was very awesome and never didn't make the cash route with Trisha. She carried well, me to the playoffs every time. So we'll build off we'll build off that question, Jill. And this is one yeah. that I don't know if it was given or not. So you can either be mixed or ladies or anything that you want. Who do you look forward to bowling against? So, like, if we were going to go to, like, mixed worlds and, you know, like, we don't we don't want to bowl against Tim. He's not fun. But you'd look at, like, somebody else and, like, who would you who do you look forward to going to bowl against? Um, I want to bowl against the best of the best. So whether it's a women's tournament, you know, I want to go to the women's worlds and I, I want to bowl against the best women's teams. And if we're going to the mixed uh, I want to go and I want to bowl against, you know, the best teams that are there. Um, you know, you guys, Tim, your team won the mix this year. Uh, I would give anything to go bowl against that team, you know, like, and it's not because I, I, I think my team would beat you or a team I could put together would beat you. It's because I want to see how I would stack up against that rock star team. I think it's such a good team. You guys are now the champs. I want an opportunity to bowl against that. I want a team a opportunity to bowl against the people um, everyone says are are the greatest, and I want to see how I do against that. That's that's you know the Amanda Carrolls, the Maddie Kellys. I want to bowl them. I want to bowl against you know the Craig Holbrooks, the Jeff Surrettes. I want to see how a team that I put together can stack up against that one. And you know the hope is always at the end that you're going to be on top, but even just the opportunity to be there and to try it. That's, that's what I want to do. Tim's team was very, very pleasant to bowl against. We had a pleasant <laughs> against they, Tim's team. Good. Had, had good form. Had they were in excellent form. form. We complimented on their form many, many yes. times. Yes, it um, was, it was very pleasant. It was very pleasant. Yes. yes. Um, so actually, Jilly, I got one for you. Uh, you mentioned that you coach in the kids league and some of the young ones coming up. Um, your son is bowling. Do you have you 
Okay, so both my kids bowl as well. My son, my daughter is getting into it a little bit more than she was. She's about to be nine. Um, I have the hardest damn time coaching my own kids. And it seems like that's a recovering theme from many of the parents who are good bowlers. Absolutely. And coaching in the kids' leagues, I find I have to stay away and go coach other kids. But then I have this weird feeling that I'm ignoring my own kid. I should be there watching him. Like, do you deal with that balance? And how do you deal with it? Like, I found it like I picked a kid and turned one of the kids that I, that I found that was close, that just need a little polish. And that was like my project for the year, kind of, sort of, that I would work harder with that one kid and try to bring him along. How did you deal with kind of like raising your own kid, trying to coach, but at the same time, that comfortable distance? I, I struggled with it for a long time, Mark. And I got lucky because Tommy and Ethan are really close. So Tommy ended up doing a lot of the coaching, especially in the beginning with Ethan. Um, But I had a hard time because we didn't, he always felt like any type of of feedback I gave him was criticism. Uh, So he struggled against it, right? And so it was really hard. And I think at any sport, I think when you're trying to coach your own child, it it doesn't always come across, you don't always come across maybe the way you want to. They're not going to take it the right way because I think they expect you to be supportive um so that's what it kind of became it became uh I sat back I took more of a supportive role you know tried to boost his confidence try to remind him you know that it's just a game or that you know bad things it's just you know yeah it was a bad string it's not doesn't make you a bad bowler Mm -hmm. that kind of stuff like play that more of a role um and yeah I ended up what worked for the longest time was I coached up. So I, I coached the, the more senior, you know, like the older kids as opposed okay. to the younger. Because then yes. that way I was coaching, you know, the 14, 15 year olds. I found was, that easier to coach little, yes. the older kids because they were already knew how to do it. All you had to do was kind right. of like pol- polish it a exactly. little bit and make them a little better. Yeah. They needed more of the um, the praise and the in the you know, you being there to help them and maybe a shot playing. It wasn't so much form and it wasn't so much, you know, you take three steps and you throw a ball and you have to aim here. Tommy was really good at getting Ethan to understand that I struggled really bad. Um, So yeah, now as he's getting older though, like we, he's going to be 21. um, We've been bowling in like a pickup league. And so now though, he wants to pick my brain. He wants to know, well, you played this shot here. Why did you do that? And um, well, you know, like in this situation, you did blah, like why, you know, mm-hmm. what, what did that game make? You went for, you went for the nine instead of the 10, like, you know, it's like, well, yeah. Cause in that way. What's well, that yeah. more so, mature but, brain yeah. now like that they get couldn't it. get it when they were like, that was the problem I had with Dom. Yeah. He would always reject me thinking that I was coming down on him, but yep. I really wasn't. I was trying to be as supportive to be like, hey, you know, I'm doing this a long time. Trust me, do that. And it's this. And he'd take that as, oh, I'm not good enough to do it my way. And we, we would clash quite a bit. And now that he's getting, I mean, granted, he's only like, he's about, he's like 12 and a half, almost 13. But now he's a little older in that respect where he can be like, oh, now I kind of get it okay cool like still not as old you know he's not 21 yet or any of that no. stuff but the older they get it's almost like the more they figure out year to year but it's exactly. all it's very tough in the beginning and being it's a tough. parent it is and brian you're gonna you'll start seeing yeah. it too like it really he's two and, it and a half really going did. on 12 now right yeah <laughs> You know, uh, Violet's playing softball and, uh, you know, like they had talked to Tommy about coaching and he was like, nah, like <laughs> we, we've we just, we've kind of decided with having gone through it with Ethan, with Violet, I think we're going to maybe be a little bit more hands off, let other people kind of, and we can just boost her confidence and talk to her maybe after. I think we just, you know, and it was really hard. I'm, not, I'm sure you found it, Mark, like you want to watch them. Like I was coaching other kids and trying to watch Ethan because I want to watch him. Like you want to yes. see your child succeed or, or whatever, but you already have other commitments too. And so trying to find that balance is, is really, it, it's really it's, tough. It is really tough. I coached, so I coached all three of my kids at one point or another um, in all the sports they did, football, basketball, yeah. and, and baseball. And it was really difficult separating dad from coach and coach from yep. dad um, to a point where we would be driving home from a game and we'd be talking about the game and why 
I wanted him to do X amount, you know, A, A, B, and C. And, you know, instead of being the dad of, man, that was really cool that you did X, Y, and Z. We never got to that. Yep. And my kids are now older. I mean, they're 29, 28, and 23, uh, 24. So it's very difficult. I, I really admire what you guys are doing with Violet, with trying to be more hands off. Yeah. You know, be the supportive parent and parents instead of the uh, the, the coach that I know Tommy's going to struggle with. Yeah. And it's we'll, hard it watching is. them and not being able to help, but at the same point having to be hands off and just be mom and dad watching. It's now, I, I, and yeah, and I don't want to, we're going to plug it, but here we go. So she's, she's <laughs> playing in an, she's playing in an all girl league and it's, it's actually the, it's KV girls softball and it's be, it's all ran by strong female, like strong women and it's all women. Um, and I think that's great because it's going to give her an opportunity to see other how you know women do in sport where mm -hmm. as you know i'm not sure she'd see that in other places i mean bowling it's it's emerging but um for me it so that she can be surrounded by that and to see that you know being a girl in sports doesn't mean she's less than and Correct. that's 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 very important to me Correct. for her to to see that she can she's going to be out there and she can do anything that the guys can do yeah, absolutely absolutely they so should like be none of that i got i got a i got a question for you yeah. And it's and it wasn't on the list, uh, but that's, that's okay. Uh -oh. <laughs> um, no, do you do you have a a, a bucket list of bowling, like uh, like you want to get a two hundred string? You want to you was, know things like that. That's kind of what yes, my question absolutely. was too. Like what's left? What keeps you um, going? Well, everything. I I I am I like I like winning, guys. I, I know it sounds crazy. I think everyone anyone no, who's anyone doesn't. who's ever won, I think they they love they love winning. And I also as much as I love to win, I really really hate to lose. Like I'm I don't want to say I, I don't think I'm a sore loser, but I just it it eats at me. Like like what could I have done more of? What could I have done differently? Um, you know, and then I sit there and I think about it for next time. Um, I'm always trying to improve. So like I, I love winning, hate losing. Um, so yeah, I've got a bucket. I do have a bucket list. There's a lot of things checked off of it, but yeah, I, I mean, I'd like to at some point try to have a 200 or a house record. I've come close a couple times to the house records. Um, now you that wait. we're in St. John, hopefully. You don't have maybe. a house record? I don't have a house record. Oh, bullshit. Um, no, I don't. So uh, yeah, so that would be, that would be pretty cool. Um, color, you know, me, I've, color me very surprised, to be I've, honest, uh, and that's yeah. I, I am shocked. I have, I have, you know, my high triples four fifty six, but again, you know, the it's high a big triple, number. Yeah, it's, so there's, you know, I mean, I have some really good records, but none of them have been, you know, the best in a house. So that would be cool to have. Um, I would love to go down and win that tournament in Augusta. You were talking about the doubles at one seven ten. One seven ten is awesome. I love bowling there. Uh, so, you know, that's on my list. Um, but I, it's funny, I talk about um, bucket list, but it's even bowling with certain people, you know, like I would love to bowl with, with you guys. I've already bowled with Calvin. I love it. Um, but bowling with you all would be nice. Um, there's mm -hmm. other, you know, Jeff Threat obviously is is on that list. I got to bowl with Godwin. I've always wanted to bowl with him. Um, He's fun you know, so to I bowl got, with on a team, dude. I, He's real fun to bowl with. Yeah, I got to, <laughs> to take that off. So, um, you know, but there's there's others too that would be, fun um but yeah um i always wanted to bowl in um you know like a 20 stringer of some sort like the women's used to have i think mm -hmm. it would be nice if there was something for women like that uh and to be honest uh one time if i had some extra cash lying around i think i'd like to go into the men's 20 stringer and put myself up against them or the men's world singles um i bowled in the men's uh provincial singles once um something i wanted to do um, I have huge props for Kerrigan Skinner for doing it this year, uh, for bowling against the men and something like that, you know, regardless of the outcome, I think women getting in there and saying, Hey, like we can do this, um, is Laurie great. Lewis herself is in the men's teacher this right? season Thanks. and mm -hmm. yeah. continuing to kick ass. Right? So, and, and I just think, I think women need to, to be in there and to represent whether, you know, it's little by little, the more you, you go at it. Um, the goal is always <laughs> for me to be the best 
bowler I can be in the house, you know, in, in the lanes, it's not necessarily the best woman, it's the best bowler. And, you know, sometimes that works out really great. And, you know, you beat some of the men, sometimes you don't, but, you know. Bowling, bowling with Nate's good because uh, the Can-Am, for example, like bowling with Nate, you know, I sit there and I'm like, hey, how many strings did I beat Nate? <laughs> well, I beat Nate? <laughs> look, let, let's, I mean, let's face it, good. that was that was <laughs> highly unfair of you bowling with Nate in Bangor. Um, <laughs> because you know going in that, that you're going to have a lead going into your back half. It's, it's easy to bowl with a lead when you're up 50. <laughs> That's okay. Was that some passive aggressive kind of shit? Oh my god, I yeah, got I think my, it was a little I bit. Got, I think oh my god. Just fell off the rail. A little salty, got, bro. No, I got the you, absolute mad, bro? You mad? No, not in the least. I You got I, the look, snot kicked out of you. I have been beaten. <laughs> Here's the way I look at it. I have been beaten by the best in this game. Because they've been forced to bowl the best to beat me. And there's not yeah. much I can do. I can't. They're, they're, the the only off the only defense in this game is an offense. True. And in Absolutely that, true. In that particular string, um, there's not much you can do against 180 something. There isn't. I no, threw a one, nothing. I threw a 140. I lost by almost 50 pins. I'm okay with that. I am. I'm okay with it. Um, it's a different story if I bowl a 90 and I lose to a 95. That's a different story. Right. That's not that's not getting beat. That's beating yourself. Mm-hmm. I, I would say even if you if you bowled a ninety five and got beat by a one forty, that's beating yourself. Like I would sit there and beat myself up about that. I'd be thinking about that for right. You didn't even compete. <laughs> I, I you didn't even give home. it a Tommy, run. Yeah. Tommy would be like trying to coax me off the roof. Like he'd be like, he'd be like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Jill, it's okay. There'll be more pins tomorrow. Come right. down, honey. Please, please yeah. come down. <laughs> You're all right. <laughs> Calvin, you got uh, you got anything else, for Jill? No, I got no more. <laughs> Really? <laughs> you got nothing to say. Of all people, you got what nothing to say. About it. Jill, Holy do you? Shit. You know what? We've been we've been peppering Jill here. Jill, do you have anything for us? Ooh, that's I, okay. I, I meant to I meant to put that in there that this is a give and take here. Feel free to okay. do that. So I want to know the best piece of bowling advice you guys have ever been given. Oh. Oh my. Uh, don't aim. Mm. The best piece of advice I was ever given was by my don't grandfather. Aim. No, when I was about five, six years old. And I didn't understand it until I got older. And when I really started putting it into practice is when things really turned around for me upstairs. It's not a physical thing. It wasn't a keep your elbow tucked or keep your back. It was all, it was from the neck up. And it was... I remember going bowling with my grandfather and we would just go for fun and just, just go play on a Saturday afternoon. Grandma and grandpa took me bowling, me and my sister, my sister hated it. But even when I was a kid, I loved it. And I would get mad even when we were just bowling for fun. If I didn't get like an eight or a nine, even at like six, seven years old, like I wanted to be good and excel. My grandfather told me, he was like, listen, you have about as much time as it takes for the resetter to rack the next 10 pins to be upset about what happened. Because when the next 10 pins come down, it wasn't those pins that you just missed. It was the other 10. These are 10 brand new pins. And I tell the kids this all the time. I say it different ways to different kids. Yeah. But in, but once those next 10 pins come down, that is a brand new opportunity to change it all around. And if you yep. keep what happened earlier on your mind and you stay frustrated and upset, or even on the converse, even if you're throwing strikes all over the place and you're like, oh, man, I'm doing it. These next 10, they're not racked in the same way the other ones were, man. This is a brand new 10. This is the first 10 you've seen all night. So I keep telling, even now at 40 or whoever I'm bowling or whoever I'm coaching or whatever it is, when the next 10 come down, whatever happened before is gone. And now it's a brand new one. And that has that that's helped me. And now that I'm doing a lot of coaching and mentoring myself, that's one of the first things I pass down. And it seems to work. That was yep. the best piece of advice I ever heard. Yeah. So there's, there's, there's two P there, there's actually two that I can answer this with. Um, the first one is, is as long as you, as long as you hit your object pin or object spot, there's nothing else you can do. 
Not a damn thing you can do from 60 feet away. You can only put the ball in certain positions, and then everything else is you have to allow the ball to do the work. Uh, the second piece is very similar to Mark. Um, I used to be a very angry bowler. Um, you used, used to be? Yeah, no. I don't, no, I, he's, he, I don't he, really he get angry when I bowl. I, mean, I still get a little irritated, but I rarely get angry. Um, I used to be really an angry bowler. And, you know, Russ and Brian has heard me say this before. Uh, Russ pulled me aside one day and he's like, what are you what are you getting mad about? And I said something. He goes, you're not good enough to be mad. And I kind of stopped and looked at him. He goes, I mean that like this. Do you see me get mad when I bowl? And I said, no. And he goes, if I don't get mad when I bowl and I'm a 125 and I'm the number one bowler in the state, why are you getting mad? And it made me stop. And then I got mad the next box. But it just, it took a long time for it to really sink in. And I have given that kind of advice to people. Most of the people that I know that will take it with a sense of humor and a grain of salt. But truly, when I look, and I've said it to Brian, I'm like, you're not good enough to get mad. I mean it in a way of yeah. if you're not, if you're seeing Craig Holbrook, if you're seeing, you know, Tommy back in the day, Tommy Olsen, you know, Charlie Milan, you know, Russ and all those, you're not, well, Charlie, not a good example because he would break glasses. No, every, <laughs> you went through like eight pairs of glasses a year. Oh yeah. yeah. Would he throw them down into the machine or just no, he's so, not no, so them or snap can, them. Let me give you an example. So, I it seen was a dude my, take his glasses off and heave them down the lanes one time. It machine. was my first year bowling in the States. I'm a 115 average, and we're bowling up in Lincoln, Maine, in the fastest house I've ever been in in my life. Literally, if you just stomped your foot, the pins fell over. It was just a fast house. And uh, he broke three pairs of glasses and five strings and went 740. Yeah. And he got that mad, throwing 740. I mean, granted, wow. the house was probably electrically stupid fast, so maybe I went, it was. So. I went. I went. Six, I went like six eighty, and it was my high five at the time. Uh, like I hit the head pin like five times in, in five strings. It was just, you know what? Yeah. Bowling in a house like that is fun once or twice a year. Um, I'd love to do it now because holy shit, I might actually hit six hundred for five. Um, it'd be cool. It's fun. Uh, but no, seriously, Joe, that's a great, that's a great question. Calvin, what about you? I said mine. Don't, no, you did. Yeah, I did. I said mine. Don't, don't aim. aim. He said don't oh. aim. Yeah. Don't he was aim. told not to aim. He's a man don't of few aim. words when he wants to be. Yeah. Mine is, don't aim. my dad told it to me at my first Worlds, and I didn't realize it then, and it's come to me over time. It was after I threw my first string, which was really good. It was 151 string. And I was all excited. And he looks at me. He goes, do you have fun? I go, yeah. He goes, you like this? I go, yeah. He goes, enjoy it. It's not going to be around forever. He patted me on the back and we went to the truck. And I didn't get it at the time. Right. But now I look around and like half the people I bowled with in that first Worlds aren't there anymore. They don't bowl tournaments anymore. And I understood what he was talking about. He's like, enjoy this because it, it doesn't last forever. Like there, there's an expiration date on bowling in things like that. So yeah. I guess it, it helped me stop being a little shit and enjoying things a lot more. <laughs> being thankful for the opportunities, right? Yes, like it, it really exactly. is that, you know, it, that's what I think I sit there and I think about most is, is the opportunities I've had to bowl and the people I've gotten to bowl with and the people I've gotten to bowl against. Like you sit there and you're like, man, like someday we're going to be old and we're going to be sitting there and we're going to be talking about all the great stuff and all the great times and all the great people it's not necessarily going to be the things we won or lost. It's going to be those things. And so, yeah, I think that's really cool your dad to give you that advice because I do think that mm -hmm. that's really what it is. Um, you know, with me, it was always, you're always a mark or two away from mediocrity. <laughs> so even when you're sitting there and you're kind of like, oh, man, like I'm really sucking, you know, the truth is you're always strike spare away from being, you know, 
one ten. Like you know, yeah. what I mean? like, like you know, you know sp- really, spike spare you know, in the ninth and tenth, bail it right? out to like a one twelve, and you're like, right? all right, that could have been ninety one real fast, but I got out of mm-hmm. that. Okay, exactly. So you're always just two marks away from being mediocre. So it's kind of been my mantra for the last few years. Is just you know, even when things are going bad, a couple marks away. Just, I know, saw Tim throw one twenty with a triple in the tenth. Well, there you go. Right, like. Don't have to be good all the time. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's, Couple the marks Calvin, away. that's the Calvin way of bowling. Throw now two you're marks. always There's good another... for a cap. <laughs> middle, throw two marks at the end for 123. Yeah, always good yeah, for 124. <laughs> <laughs> always There's another piece of advice. No? Every time. If you, surra- you surround yourself with great bowlers, you don't have to be great all the time. <laughs> that's a good one. I like that. You can think about it. In, 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 yeah, it, it, if you're bowling in a tournament, like let's take a marathon tournament. Like the 560, if you surround yourself with good, solid people that are going to bowl their average, you don't have to bowl elite all the time. Yep. Every once in a while, when you throw a 110, you might get bailed out because the other guy, your teammates have bowled, you know, what they what they bowl as well. I always thought consistency is very much overlooked when you're making a team. Yes. You can have a bunch of guys that are, yeah, they're all explosive bowlers. Yeah, but they can also all throw 90s at the same time. And it's the same on the female side. You know, it, it's it, I, I think with the, the female side, though, Jill, and maybe you can attest this. It's more chemistry over there. Yes. Yeah, than, I, 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 I mean, because talent is is you need talent, but chemistry and cohesiveness is what wins bowling tournaments. And I will go to the end of this game saying that. And I agree with you wholeheartedly. I've been a captain in many things, and I don't just pick my teams based on what the average was or how good the guy did in the tournament. I want to see the five guys that we have on the team and how good of buddies are we? How well do we gel? Do we all have similar interests that, like, even if the bowling's not going so good, we could sit and we could talk about Monday's episode of Monday Night Raw or, yo, did you guys see the Bruins game? And then we could kind of jive off of what's happening over here and just get the mojo back up pick it back up and then kill it in the third game. Chemistry and consistency over explosiveness all day. Yep. Absolutely. You don't want to, it really matters, right? You know, you could put a team together of the five best bowlers and, and that's great. And you, you could go in and win tournaments. There's no doubt, but you know, I would much rather, and I do, I'm lucky that way. I get to bowl with people I consider friends, people who I know support me, people who I know that if in the last box of string, I don't pull out something or if something were to go wrong, they're not going to blame me. They're not going to turn around and be like, hmm. oh, fucking Joe. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, like, and, that's a, in, and that's in turn, a interesting concept. Well, that is a very interesting. Concept. Damn it, Jill. You didn't get 59 pins in your last right? two boxes. What's wrong with you? And in turn, you if one of my teammates is bowling anchor, they know that they're going to be supported by me too. They're not, I'm not going to sit there and I'm not going to, after it's over, say, you know, damn, whoever, you know, it's, it's because it's on them, you know, it's it really, is, right. You're, it, that's, you want to feel like you're, you're being supported. You want to feel like your teammates have your back and um, you just, you, you have fun. Our 560 team when we won was, you know, it was a, our, our the best group of women like you could bowl with like we had chemistry all the whole entire tournament we bowled really well we threw some big 600s it was fantastic and i really do think that chemistry is really what helped win it for us really in the end like you i have bowled on some great i bowled on some teams that had some tremendous bowlers but were shitty teammates mm-hmm. yep and i and i won we won the Worlds in 2001 with a team that didn't necessarily have the best bowlers. Yep. But we had chemistry at that point. That can I, help to counteract all I of that. So. If everybody's driving and flowing and like yeah. vibing at the same time, it just feeds to the next guy, feeds down. It's very difficult that there's no chemistry and one guy starts going on that rough stretch in the middle of a game, a couple seven boxes, and then and a there's ten, you know. no one there to support him. And there's nobody like, come on, dude, you know, don't worry about it. You pick it back up next time. Everybody's just like, oh, shit. It's lonely to sit there on the bench. Like. Yeah. Right. And then the next guy goes up, and it turns into a sulk fest all the way down, and it just right? gets worse and worse and worse. Nothing worse than that. Never helps. Yep. No, no. So we're we're kind of gone over, but... 
I appreciate Joe. I appreciate you coming on. Uh, I've wanted to have you on Thank this you. podcast for Absolutely. quite some time. I'm uh, really excited to be here. I I will say it where it's recorded and where ah. it's for posterity's sake. Oh, I have <laughs> no. I have no, said this he's, from the beginning. He started that and then come up with some really bad dad jokes after he's like, "I just want to say it." That's on Friday. Uh-huh. Oh, that's, that's right. That's Friday. the Friday show. We're in the bowling show. I forgot. Okay, we're in the no, bowling we're show. Safe. We're safe. So okay. I'm being I'm being serious here. There's, I have said all along that you could you could argue uh, that there are four or five women bowlers right now who you could argue are the best women bowlers in the world, and that would be Maddie Kelly. That would be uh, Amanda Carroll, Tasha. You and I'd probably add Mario right now because Mario is just bowling tremendous. Mm-hmm. Um, on, on the females. Um, I would argue, and I will argue this, that the best female bowler in the game right now, Jill, is you. And I would I would say oh. that. We're on the show. I would say it if, if Maddie, if Amanda, or Tasha were on the show as well. Um, so don't, don't prove me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, um, no, I, I mean, I appreciate that. Um, I agree with you when you, when people start talking about, not I agree with you about me being, that's not what I meant. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I appreciate it. I hope I don't screw it up. I think those types of lists, um, it, it, it's, they're so hard, right? Like, it, are you talking right. top five at this moment? Are you talking longevity? Are you talking at a short span of time? Are you talking throughout their whole career? You know, Maddie Kelly's phenomenal and she's just getting started. You know, what we are, we're going to be talking about Maddie Kelly for, for a number of years. You know, yep. um, the same with, you know, Tasha. Tasha's 30 years, 29 years old. You know, she's, she's going to that- be bowling at a high level for a number of years now. Um, That's the I don't scariest know. It, part. It, yeah, right? You, like, and the, you, and must, so young. you and Amanda Shannon, must be about the same. I'm 40 and Amanda, I believe, is 38. So, I mean, we're not old either, oh, but I'm just, yeah, we're both the same. Yeah. Um, you know, like, I mean, Shannon Scribner, the girl's mm-hmm. got how many main yep. titles now? Like, you know, but we didn't mention her. But, and, and you know, that's like, not a knock, <laughs> and please know that's not a knock on Shannon yep. because I have a tremendous amount of respect mm-hmm. for Shannon. Exactly. But this is what I mean. So when you start talking about lists like that, or, or you, you want to say, I think these are the top, it could be, it's so subjective. Um, you know, Kelly Stoyles was fantastic. She was so much better than everybody else for, a, you know, a period of time. For years. But then, exactly. Yes. But, you know, hasn't bowled, you know, competitively in the last few um, you know, when you start talking about, you know, even though the Janet Pox, the Nance Vestals or, or, you know, Tim, your sister, you know, there was a time where they were the dominant women in the sport. Um, Deb Regan, to me, has always been fantastic. She's been she's a great teammate. She has, you know, numerous titles. So, like, you can sit there and you can make a case for anyone, I think, at any point in time. So to sit there and, and to pick one, I really do appreciate that you picked me. Like, thank you. <laughs> No, you belong do, on that list, at least. Yes, very much so. That, yep. that it's, it's hard to say. I think it, it, depending on who you talk to, everyone's going to have a different five. I just like knowing that I'm in the conversation. It makes it does make me feel good. So thank you. <laughs> but that, those um, little conversations and things, that's what makes it interesting yeah. when we actually when we sit and we do chew the fat on these shows about these things yeah. like that. And then we get to the mm-hmm. tournaments and we actually watch a couple of these people that we were like, oh, they were both in my top five. Now they're bowling against each other. You know, right. now you can sit and keep an eye on it. So it just kind of adds to the discussion in the back. It might add a little bit to the fuel of the competition actually mm-hmm. on the approach. And it's just kind of good discussion fuel. All, it's, all look, I, I've, I've had the pleasure of bowling with Maddie. And I've had the yeah. pleasure of bowling with Amanda Carroll. And I've had the pleasure of bowling with Shannon Scribner. Um, I've never bowled with Jill. I've never bowled with Tasha. Those are the two women right now that I would absolutely love to bowl with in a tournament. Well, book it on right. I mean, you I don't. Right. You couldn't afford <laughs> them. Right. You couldn't afford yeah. them at yeah. this point. You couldn't <laughs> pay them enough. We'll I've been, sa- I've been saving up money. <laughs> I, I'll pay American dollars. So I, you know, I've been. Saving no, up. he still has the money that we were paying him to get you on That's the show. Right. That's he was right. telling us that we had to pay you at a fee. <laughs> Make him get that he, back. <laughs> he converted it to Canadian and everything, so he got an extra like eighty five dollars out of the whole thing. Timmy, uh, Timmy. So he's got money. Oh, he's got money. You know why Take he did it? A and W. That's money. what he wants. He wants. <laughs> That's a- what oh, God. I want A and W. 
I but can't anyway, um, I want Dairy Queen. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna wrap it up for the night. Um, yes. Miss Canada. I, I, you know, Jill, thank I'm you. St. Louis. Oh, thank you, guys. Thank, thank you so no, much. No, Jilly Bean, thank on. you for coming on, kid. Thank you so much. It's been uh, good to see you. It's been thank a long you. time. Really enjoyed it's it. too long. Absolutely. <laughs> and the fact is, Calvin has been quiet most of the show, which has been fantastic. Yes. It's been I, perfect. I, I, I always enjoy listening to Jill talk, so I'm just Aww, letting it happen. He, he's for muted that. from now on Thanks until he gets a crown. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to find one. So, <laughs> as we wrap up, folks, please don't forget seven short episodes remaining to episode 69. The, the roast episode of Tim Matero. That's yes. right. Tim fucking Matero. Yes. <laughs> Get Which... your videos in. <laughs> Which, by the way, I, I have to ask, was that you or Tasha that came up with that? It was me. <laughs> it was you. Okay. Was me. I say that, but then she's probably going to be like, it was me. So I'm going to get a text very shortly or whenever this goes out, she's going to be like, I can't believe you took credit for that. So maybe I'll say her and then. <laughs> well, we need videos from both of you, please. 30 to 45 or a minute. I've already started. Tommy's got his too. So we're. Oh, we're, love it. Coming. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I can't, I can't wait. I can't wait to hear it and to see it. Um, yeah. So, folks, don't forget, again, get your uh, videos, submissions in. Um, you roast me, roast Maki, Brian, Calvin. Uh, just remember, there is an art to the roast. It's not just a general shit on someone. There is an art to it. Right. Uh, right. Have fun with it. Make it funny. 30 to, se 30 to 60 seconds. Unless it's really funny and you go longer, have at it. Um, you highlight their quirkier mannerisms by shitting on them a little bit, but letting you know yeah. that you love them, and, too. And and remember, <laughs> we get a minute or two afterwards. If you yes. choose to get us, we get a minute or two to get you back. Take the joke, please. Yes. All right. No hate mail. No garbage. None of that stuff. It's This is a good time. We're all friends. We can all take a little shit. We can all give a little shit. This is for laughs and goofs only. Please. Yes. Uh, Please, send it to disclaimer the, rack. Out, the 2021 disclaimer out of the way. Yes. Uh, yeah. Send it to ripping the rack podcast at gmail.com. Again, you can find us on Facebook. You can find us on Twitter. You can find us on Instagram at ripping the rack podcast. You can't find us on Brian's only fans. We'll save that for Friday. It's I password uh, protected. Server. I tried getting into it. It's password server. protected. Yeah. Brian, where else can they uh, hear us? Oh, uh, they can hear us on YouTube, iHeartRadio, iTunes. Spotify, Google Podcasts, and wherever else you listen to your podcasts in your ears. You do that so well. You, you really so well. massage so your... You, it's, yeah. like, it's like yeah. sensual time with Brian. We say. <laughs> <laughs> you know right? what? That will be a new uh, sensual time with Brian will be a uh, segment that on Brian. That could be a whole segment, yeah. dude. You can hear us on Spotify. No, Apple no, iTunes. You no, now you just sound you like go a... Back. You gotta go back. Uh, yeah. No, you just lost your say. You just lost yeah, your. I segment. lost it. God damn it! Uh, no, no, no. On the Friday show, we need to do that. Where that's a weekly segment where there's like a hot warming story of the week in the news, <laughs> and Brian says it in a sultry way. Sexual voice, yeah. Right. Sexy yeah. Voice. Yeah, 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 his sexy voice. Uh, right, I'll work on that. Uh, thank Tommy for us for Will for you. You know, allowing you to. Join join our podcast. No, no, no. you with my thank Skype. Tommy for setting it up because she has no <laughs> I clue couldn't get it. what to do. No, I no. already did. I already did that. I did that <laughs> prior prior to. Um, we would love to have you on again. Uh, maybe love we it. can get maybe we can get you and Tasha on at the same time at some point. I, we, I would love that. I'm going to work on that. Tasha Murray, this is uh, me calling you out. Coming on the podcast. <laughs> oh, <laughs> here we go. There it is. <laughs> there it is. All right, folks. Uh, don't right. forget, you can, you can hear us uh, on Friday mornings. Uh, anything but Candleton Bowling. Usually it's me being dumb and Calvin and I losing it at the end. Uh, talk about uh, homicides. Uh, yeah, uh, close. Yeah. Almost that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> almost yeah, that. Almost. And Mark and I straighten the plane back onto we, the runway. We were really trying hard to right the rails and end the show properly. I think we failed yeah. epically, but at least the show ended. And that worked out good. We didn't get thrown <laughs> off of any social media platforms, and it, so that was and good. And of course, you guys can Thanks check Marky. Yes, yeah, you can check Marky and Brian out on Sunday nights, uh, nine o'clock Eastern Standard Time on Johnny Death Drop. 
uh, twitch.tv Johnny Death Drop. Uh, you can uh, dudes and belts chat cast. So talk about the uh, wrestling. Wrestling. Mm -hmm. The wrestling. Appreciate Rassling. it, Joe. Thank you again. No problem, and, guys. Thanks uh, for having me. Go, go, Red Sox. <laughs> <laughs>